the one thing that's come up there is histamine overload. Now, histamine is an interesting molecule that is really hasn't been understood or worked with um, a lot. And recently, we've been doing an incredible amount of work with practitioners and patients around histamine. So many individuals who are suffering from gut dysbiosis, the gut problems, um, and headaches, migraines especially, we're usually finding that there is this um, histamine overload where the histamine is not being broken down in the body. And when we get high levels of histamine, it's, it kind of creates this storm in our immune system, which can lead to a, a definitely manifest in around the, anything to do with the immune system. And we know that most of the immune system lives in the gut, so gut disposes, but also especially around neuroinflammation, headaches, and migraines. So this was, you know, whenever I see purple in histamine, I'm always looking to think, you know, have there been headaches in your past? What were the triggers for the headaches? Um, there's some high histamine foods that can really trigger like red wine, fermented foods. And remembering that fermented foods is actually a really healthy food. We love red wine. So um, being cognizant of those. Can you talk a little bit about your, your experience with, with that? Yeah, for sure. Well, I would say a few things. I would say that um, like if I don't move my bowels real well, then I definitely get a lot of brain fog. It really impacts my energy and my mental clarity. So I drink a lot of water in the morning, make sure that I'm moving my bowels like twice in the first hour or two um, every morning. And I, I feel so much better when I do that. I think that probably is playing into the histamine just, um, you know, moving out some of the, uh, you know, endotoxins that are in the system. Um, you know, I used to have headaches. I'm also thinking that the, the, the nosebleeds is probably related to history. Yeah. Could well be. That's what I, that's I also, when you hypothesis. said the nosebleeds, I was, it could well be because you get this kind of inflammatory immune response to, um, to histamine that can, that, that, really creates a storm that well could could benefit because it is an inflammatory kind of immune reaction and that's really could could be so it, you know your children's genetics are your genetics yeah. so mostly so it could well be that that's something that um is well worth looking at in, around your kids as well so um and and the thing about histamine is the what we what we generally recommend is that we don't remove all the foods from the diet that are high in histamine because there's some really great ones like avocado, tomatoes, fermented kimchi, all those foods. But when there is an episode, so an episode of gut or an episode of headaches, nosebleeds, and everything, then we would just for a short time decrease our exposure to histamine foods and just to give the body a little bit of a break. Um, and then we also know that there are some supplements that can try and help kind of break down the histamine as well. Yeah. So we work, work with that as well. So yeah, just I do notice that supplements. some of those um, histamine lowering supplements, like I do very well with vitamin C, quercetin, resveratrol. I was going to say quercetin. So that's all three of those. I notice, a, I notice a yeah. pretty significant difference. Like when I'm supplementing that's with those good. regularly, it just feel a lot better. And that's, that's probably around the histamine. So we, yeah. we strongly go with quercetin and resveratrol, 100%. And then, as I say, when there's an episode, we decrease, we just give the body a bit of a break yeah. from, from the histamine generating molecules. Um, and, and then once you're back again, we kind of reintroduce those foods. But you're 100% right. Those are three great choices for, for, for supplements. 